A common problem that wastes hours and hours of Python developers' time is dependency management. This is where poetry comes into play. It is the most popular way to handle dependency management in large, complex Python applications. So in this video, we're going to be discussing three things. One, what is poetry and why you should use it. Two, the pros and cons of using poetry versus something like pip. And then lastly, three, a full code example of setting up a project in poetry and then going over all of the poetry commands. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Groby, a software engineer with over a decade of experience, and I've helped thousands of developers grow and learn within their craft. Poetry is a modern take on managing dependencies within your Python project. Its main purpose is to make your workflow cleaner and more predictable by handling your dependencies automatically. With this, it also creates virtual environments and has a pretty awesome CLI that you can tell is made with care. Now, one thing that separates poetry from other dependency management systems like PIP is everything is handled within a single .toml file, and that .toml file is a source of truth for the project. In that .toml file, you can handle semantic versioning, which helps avoid version conflicts and keeps things compatible. And inside that same file, you can easily install, update, and remove packages, which you'll see in the coding section of this course when we create our own virtual environment and everything just kind of happens automatically. Magically. If you've used PIP and virtual ENV in complex scripts, you've probably hit some roadblocks. The typical workflow when you're using PIP or something similar involves manually creating a virtual environment and then managing all the dependencies by hand through something like a requirements.txt file. While this works, it's pretty far from foolproof because you can easily run into version conflicts and that version conflicts is known as dependency hell when two packages require different versions of the same dependency. And on top of it, it's just kind of tedious work because you have to manually track and install everything by hand. Now, that world of dependency management is really where poetry steps in to make your life easier and your team's life easier. So let's dive into code and walk through poetry step by step. All right, again, so poetry is Python's packaging and dependency management system trying to be made easily. So how we can do this is if you're using like Mac, you're going to need to say pip3. But if you're on Windows, you can just say pip. But we're going to say pip3 install poetry. Now, this installation is going to be like on your computer because we want to use this as our main dependency management system for this application that we're about to build in this video. Now, after you do this, we're not going to be creating like a virtual environment like we do in most projects where we create like a main.py file and then we create a virtual environment. What we're going to be doing here is letting poetry handle everything and it's going to handle the creation of a new project. So here, let's just go ahead and say poetry new fast API demo. Now, it doesn't necessarily need to be a fast API application, but I'm just going to be doing that here. And I spelled poetry wrong. So let's go ahead and just fix that. All right. And now what we did, we just created inside our package a fast API demo project. Real quick, if you've enjoyed the video, please subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos and check out my best selling fast API course linked below. Now let's go ahead and CD into that fast API demo project. So we are now going to be sitting right here inside this directory where we can see that we have a fast API demo with an initialization file already created, a test directory with initialization file already created a readme file. So if we want to add that to our project and something called pyproject.toml. Now this is going to include everything that your project needs to be able to install all the dependencies that you add and being able to ship projects between different developers so they can install all their dependencies. It's all going to be right here in this .toml file. And here we can see that it's going to use Python 3.11 and that's because that's what's installed on my machine. But we're also gonna have the name of the project, which is fast API demo, which it took just because that's what we named the project. There's gonna be version 0.1.0 of our project. We can add a description, we can add authors, and then our readme is gonna be our readme.md file. Now here is where all the magic happens, but luckily we don't need to do that ourselves. So if we were gonna be creating a fast API application, it needs fast API and Uvicorn to be able to work correctly. So what we can say is poetry add fast API Uvicorn. All right, so a couple things just happened automatically. 
When we set poetry at FastAPI in Uvicorn, we can see that it created a virtual environment called this automatically in this directory. It found the latest version of FastAPI, which at the time of this recording is 0.115 and then Uvicorn 0.30. And then it automatically added it to our tool.poetry.dependencies. It added that here and then it automatically installed our stuff. Now, if it doesn't automatically install, so let's say like you have another developer who did this on their machine, they push the repository, you pull the repository and there's new dependencies. All you need to do is say poetry install and that'll install all the dependencies that aren't yet already installed in your virtual environment. But we can see that installing dependencies from this lock file, no dependencies to install or update. Cool. So how do we actually run this project then? Well, Again, it is sitting inside a poetry virtual environment. And that's pretty big news. So if we try to do like Uvicorn and then we try to say fastapi demo dot main colon app dash dash reload. So let's say we created inside here a new file. We named it main.py. And then inside here, we said we just wanted to create a simple fastapi application that says hello fastapi with poetry. If we try to go ahead and just say uvicorn fastapi dash demo dot main colon app dash dash reload, we can see that it's going to tell us that command does not exist. And that's because we are not technically in the virtual environment yet. What you need to do if you want to just kick off the virtual environment without jumping into it, you can do the exact same thing that we just did. But in front, we need to tell poetry that we are doing this. We can say poetry run. Uvicorn fast API with the poetry run. It now knows that, hey, we're going to be using poetry to kick this off. And I need to do underscore demo. So there we go. So now our application was kicked off and we're actually running our fast API application. Now, if you go ahead and you close it, it also stops the virtual environment running behind scenes with poetry. Now, if you don't want to say poetry run every single time, we can say poetry shell. This will kick off the virtual environment, kind of like how we do all the VE and Vs on most of our fast API and YouTube videos. We can see it right here, the virtual environment that poetry created when we do poetry shell. Now, if we wanted to run our application, we could just say uvicorn fast API underscore demo dot main colon app dash dash reload. And now when we run this application, it will work and we don't need that poetry run in front because we are technically inside the virtual environment. If you wanted to exit the virtual environment for whatever reason and you just wanted to use poetry run, you could just go ahead and say exit and now we exited that environment. If you wanted to find more about your environment, you can go ahead and say poetry environment info. This will give you all the information about your environment. It'll tell you like the Python version, the links to your executables and your path. It just kind of gives you a bunch of information about your project. If you wanted to change your Python version, so we have like 3.11 and you wanted to change it to 3.10. Now I don't have that installed on my machine right now, but what you could do is you would say poetry environment use Python 3.10. And if I do this, it's going to say, hey, can't find the executable of Python 3.10 because I only have one version of Python installed. But if you have multiple versions of Python and you want to be able to test certain functionality on different types of Python, that is exactly how you do it. And kind of the same thing if after you added it, you wanted to remove it instead of just saying use, you would say remove and it would do the same thing. But again, it can't find that for me because it doesn't exist. All right, so let's go back and do this Toml file. Let's be like, hey, we actually don't want to use FastAPI 0.115, we want to use a older version like 112. If we wanted to do that and we wanted to now update our environment, we could just say poetry update. And this will automatically downgrade our fast API version from 0.115 to 0.112.4. And if you're just like, actually, I want to move it back up to 115, you would do the exact same command. And now it's going to update your fast API version to the latest version. Same thing if you want to add and remove dependencies. So if we wanted to add something like PyTest to be able to test data, we could say poetry add PyTest, which will add now PyTest to our dependencies. We could upgrade or downgrade PyTest based on the version that's installed, or 
we can go ahead and just say, hey, actually, we don't want it anymore. And we can just say remove PyTest. And that'll just remove that dependency and we can see that it automatically disappears. Now there's one last thing that you can do and it's to build projects by using poetry build. This command generates distribution files and it creates a new directory under the dist directory that you can then publish to PyPy or private package repository, anything you really want to do with it. But you can just go ahead and say poetry build. And if you do that, we can see that there's going to be a new directory distribution and it's going to have your tar.gz and another .whl. All right, and I don't usually do that um, because I usually have some kind of CI CD pipeline involved. So I can just go ahead and delete that because I'm not going to need that. All right, awesome, awesome stuff. If you want all of these commands, I'll have it in my README in this project directory linked below. And I will see you in the next video.